between your chicken and your rice. Just a little, just a little, just a little. Just to create that bridge. Hey YouTube, Kim I am Sha. And I'm <laughs> Hey YouTube, No, Kima. give me a sec. One, two, three. Hey YouTube, Kim I am Sha. Hey YouTube, Kim I am... <laughs> Don't touch me. Be serious. Three, two, one. <laughs> Sophie! Hey YouTube, Kimania, I am Sha. And I'm Ju. Together we are Sha and Ju. Welcome back to our channel. So today we'll be making Singaporean chicken rice. Chicken rice. Simple name for a simple dish, but it's so delicious. As mentioned, the rice is very simple. It's just steamed on its own. And then the chicken is brined and then steamed. And then there's a few condiments that they serve on the side, usually cucumber and a soy sauce with a spicy sauce, but we have our own that we're willing to share with you. <laughs> so as always, stay tuned for Chef Shah's top tip. In Singapore, you can eat chicken rice anywhere, really. You can get it for $2 up to $30, depending yeah. on the setting that you prefer. Mm -hmm. But we had it at Hawker Chan. We're at Hawker Chan. Yao Fan Hawker Chan. So we're having apparently um, chicken rice. It's on the Bib Burma Michelin. And there's a sign outside that gives it away. We well, don't know. It looks pretty good. It smells pretty good actually. Yeah. You can buy. It. It's pretty cheap. This one was like five bucks. Like, so if this name doesn't ring a bell to you, it's the first hawker stall to achieve a Mishnah star actually mm -hmm. in the world. We were super inspired by the story, especially because the hawker culture in Singapore is fighting for its survival and we just loved eating at hawker stalls and especially yeah. at Hawker Chan. The dish was just amazing. We really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. This is an example of what a hawker center looks like. This is Maxwell Hawker Center in Singapore where we loved going a lot and amongst others we had of course the chicken rice here as well. If you would like to support the endangered hawker culture in Singapore we'll leave you a link below where you can vote for them to be added to the UNESCO representative list of intangible cultural heritage. It would really mean a lot as hawker culture is really an outstanding part of Singapore. As mentioned, chicken rice is of course the national dish of Singapore and in 2011 it actually got voted the number 13 out of the best 50 foods in the world. It's pretty incredible. Um, it has a really long history. It came originally from Hainan, which is a province in China, and it originated from a dish called Wang Chan chicken. Um, the Wang Chan chicken, though, used a lot smaller and bonier chicken piece. And then once it got actually brought to Malaysia and Singapore by immigrants in the 19th century, the Cantonese cultures influenced the dish in a way that now we're using more tender and white cut chicken meat but the idea is still pretty much the same before we get into the recipe we just want to let you know that as always we have the recipe in the description box for you yes. so that you can follow it along and recreate the dish at your own time also make sure you like the video if you're enjoying yourself today subscribe to the channel of course if you haven't already and turn the notifications on to always so you're not missing out on any of the recipes we have prepared for you. Let's, Let's get, get into, into it. it. chicken rice. It's a two-day process. The first day we're gonna cut the chicken and brine the chicken. By brining the chicken I mean we're gonna put it in water with a few seasoning, wrap it, put it in the fridge overnight. Tomorrow we're going to cook the rice, make the sauce, cook the chicken and assemble everything together. So let's get into it. Obviously for your chicken rice you will be needing a chicken. What kind of chicken are you using today Sha? 
This is a free range grain fed chicken. We have found it to be really tasty and the texture is really nice and firm. You will also be needing chicken bouillon, salt, sugar, ginger, and black peppercorn. We also have one kettle of water boiled. I'm gonna explain what to do with it. You will also be needing a big bowl and a whisk. We will start by making the brine. The brine is what the chicken is gonna soak in for the rest of the night. I am going to put my chicken bouillon in, all my salt, all the sugar, all the peppercorns, and all of the ginger. I'm having a flashback to the bread starter recipe. <laughs> and we're going to pour hot water all over it. Oops. That looks so cool. What you want to do next is take your whisk, that's why the whisk, and make sure to stir it properly and make sure everything is dissolved. Once everything is mixed in properly and dissolved, we are going to set it aside. While this is cooling down, I am going to show you how to prep the chicken. We are going to cut the chicken, wash the chicken, and then brine the chicken. First thing you want to do with your chicken is look at your chicken. If there's still any feathers anywhere, I would recommend plucking them away. Or a cool trick to do is take a blowtorch and just burn them out. That's what I do with mine. Once all the feathers are gone, we are going to cut the chicken. So flip the chicken breast side down and make it as flat as possible so you don't end up injuring yourself. What we are going to do, we are going to try to cut that chicken all the way straight back up on the spine line and open it up. I'll, let's try and see how that works out. Poke in the middle of the chicken and bring your knife down and press. So easy. For you maybe. You do the same thing on the other side. But this time you want to go just over this piece of spine. And then once you get to this part, there's the two rib cages on both sides. So what you want to do is take this piece out. So this will be the neck and the spine that attaches to the rib cage. We're going to take this out. I didn't realize we were in for a chicken lesson today. <laughs> and then open the rest up. You'll definitely see that where the middle is. Put your knife in and just... And voila! This is your chicken cut in half. We are going to wash it now. We are going to try to take all the mini organs that are still left and all the blood vessels. We're going to try to wash as much as possible out. So let's go in the sink and look at that. We are going to start by putting this under cold running water. And you want to push out as much stuff as you can. Like this is not chicken pieces, right? So you want to take it out. Once your chicken is washed, you want to put it back in the strainer. Just let all the water drain from washing before we put it in our brine. So let's just let this dry for about 20 to 30 minutes and then we're going to put it in our brine. After 40 minutes, your chicken is drained and properly dried. There's no water on the chicken skin anymore. When you touch it, it's a little sticky. Your brine has cooled down. We are going to place the chicken into the brine. Just make sure you have enough brine to cover the top of your chicken. You need to brine this chicken for at least three hours, but you can also leave it up to 12 and 24 hours also. 
So let's just put this chicken in here, wrap it and put it in the fridge. And the longer the better, right? For the, the longer the better. Mm -hmm. You want to put the bone side down and just give it a little stir in the brine. I'm going to be using only half of this chicken because I think it's a good portion for me and Ju. What do you think, Ju? Or do you want more? Well, let's start with that and then we'll see what other good recipes we can come up with with chicken. Okay. You just want to twist this one around just a little in the brine. If you can, and if you're brining in it for longer than 12 hours, I would suggest that you flip the chicken over just before you go to bed or before you set out or something. Just flip the chicken one time and leave it in the brine. Let's wrap this and we're gonna put it in the fridge. So today is day two of our chicken rice. Remember yesterday we cut the chicken, we made a brine for it, it went to, into a bath, we wrapped it, and we put it to sleep in the fridge. Today we are going to drain it, we're going to steam it, we're going to massage it, and then slice it. Seems like the chicken is in for a treat today. Right? <laughs> we are also going to cook the rice. I'll show you how it's fairly easy to assemble, and then we're going to work on the condiments. For day two of your chicken rice, you will be needing the chicken that you obviously put in the fridge yesterday. You will need rice, you will need sesame oil, soy sauce, a cucumber, you wonder why, you will find out later. Ginger, lime, Thai chili, garlic, fermented black beans. You can actually find that at any Asian supermarket. True. And sugar. So let's get started with the chicken. This is our chicken from yesterday. It looks wobbly. It's been swimming for a <laughs> whole day, right? Spa treatment for our chicken. Swim, massage, steam. We're going to take it out and put it in our strainer. Let it strain away for at least half hour before you want to cook it. Bye. Mm -hmm. I will show you how to prep the cucumber. We are going to use half a cucumber for the both of us. Do you want to see some cool designs on the cucumber? Why not? Okay. Show up. You want to take the tip of your knife, just poke through a little and do the same on the other side. So you kind of take a little, how do you call that? Line out? No, like a little pyramid shaped line. Like a long piece of triangle. You can do that all over your cucumber. If you want to feel fancy, if you want to impress people. Do it three to four times. Don't hurt yourself, take your time. Also, this is not a requirement for this dish. <laughs> <laughs> Voila! This is what it looks like. You want to start with putting all your sugar into your bowl. And then juice that half lime so you can dissolve that sugar. Work those fingers, press it out. That's, that's warming up for the massage for the chicken later. Right, chicken massage. And then you want to put all your fermented black beans. You want to make sure you dissolve all the sugar on the bottom right now. And then we're going to add the other ingredients. Next, you want to take your chili pepper. So that, chop that chili really finely. Add it to your sauce. You want to take two cloves of garlic. Once your garlic is chopped enough, put it in your sauce and add your soy sauce. Give all that a mix. Let everything stir together and all the flavors mix. Later, I'll show you how to finish it. There's a small little trick that I use. 
The chicken is ready, it's drained enough, I feel, it's a little dry. We are going to get it prepared for steaming. For that you will need some ginger and green onions. Ju, would you mind getting some green onions please? Yes, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, while she's gone, I'm gonna slice this. You don't wanna slice it too thin or too thick, it's just to line the bottom of your steam basket before we put it on the steamer. So you, you kind of need to have enough to cover the base of your chicken. I mean, to have enough to put the chicken on top. How's it going over here? Good. I brought you your green onions. Oh, wow, thank you. If I wanted the garden, I would have went myself though. Anyways, thanks. I'll use them in a bit. You're welcome. As I was saying, you don't want like to slice your ginger too thin or too thick. You just want to have enough to put on the bottom of your steam basket so your chicken can go on top of it. Let me wash those green onions and I'll be right back. Now that you have your green onions and your ginger sliced and your chicken drained, let's get to cooking the chicken. I'll show you how to do that. You want to grab your steam basket. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Ta-da! You want to place your ginger on the bottom. So for any of the people that don't have a steam basket, do you have a recommendation how they could cook it otherwise? Cook it in a metal strainer. Don't forget to spray it, just to spray a little oil so it doesn't stick to the bottom of your strainer. But other than that, it should be okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put like green onion on the bottom. As you notice, I left the roots and everything, so it's still fine. Rustic. Once your bed of green onions and ginger is ready, place the chicken with the skin side up. If you're doing a whole chicken, obviously place it like with the breast side up. This one, you're going to place the skin side up. We are going to cover this and let it steam. I'll show you how to, I place it on the steamer actually. Our chicken is ready in the basket, right? Your water is boiling, let's put it on. Be very careful. If your water is boiling like this, you want to turn it down a notch. So this is our jasmine rice. Um, we're going to wash it and strain it. It's important to wash the rice so you get all the impurities. If there's any dirt in the rice, it gets washed away. We are also going to soak this rice. It's just going to make the rice cook all the way to the middle. For this one, we're going to use two water for rice. So one measurement of rice to two water. It's different. For basmati, it will be one measurement of rice to one and a half water. For brown rice, it's going to be one measurement of rice to three measurements of water. So the best advice to know what works for you is to read the instructions on the back of the label. So this is what you're looking for, clear running water out of your rice. Make sure you drain as much water as possible. I'm going to add the water in, let it soak until we get all the other components ready for the rice. You want to soak this rice at least 15 minutes before you cook it. While the rice is soaking away, we are going to cook the garlic. But first, you want to put the sesame oil in a pot and getting up to temperature. Next, you want to slice the garlic. Try to slice it as thin as possible. To make sure that the oil is warm enough for your garlic, just take one piece of garlic and drop it in your oil. If it bubbles away right away, you know it's ready. You want the garlic to fry, not to boil. So put all your garlic in, give it a little stir so they don't stick together. Make sure your oil is not too hot either or else it will burn the garlic.
before I put the rice in, I'm going to take some aside so I can massage the chicken later. <laughs> Smells so good. So once your garlic is fried and not burned, you are going to put all the water and all the rice. Watch out, it might splash. Be very cautious. Once your rice starts to simmer, make sure that the garlic is evenly distributed. You can do that with a fork with a knife, you can do that with a spoon. I chose a, a chopstick. Your popular cooking choice. Yes. And then turn it down to low to medium heat. Cover this and let this cook for 19 minutes. Precisely. <laughs> Timekeeper. All right, it's my turn. And go. When is your chicken ready, you ask? is when you open the basket and you poke it where the thigh is. If there's no pink liquid coming out, you know your chicken is cooked. You want to gently lift your chicken. You don't want to break it. And... Ta-da! The spa treatment is complete. You want to do that to make sure that the skin stays springy and it's, so, it's going so, to be so delicious. We are going to keep that chicken submerged for five to six minutes before we take it out, drain it, and pat it down, dry it gently before we massage it. Cheeky, cheeky. Now that your chicken is ready, before you throw out that pot that it was steaming on, what you want to do is take four tablespoons and add it to that sauce that we are actually making. Chef Shah's top tip. Right? Remember we were saying there's a secret part about it? Well, here it is. You want to taste it, Ju? Sure. Thank you. It's really flavorful. I'm sure it'll really well complement the chicken actually. Mm -hmm. So what's so special about the trick with the chicken water? So because the chicken has been steaming on top of it, so all the juices from the chicken, all the juices from the ginger and the green onion went into this, right? So mm -hmm. it's a concentration of flavors that you're actually putting in the sauce that you're actually going to eat with the rice and the chicken later. It's pretty smart. It's been five minutes now, the chicken has cooled down. We're going to take it out of the ice bath. And you want to let this drain all the way and be really dry. In a few minutes, we're gonna actually pat it down with paper towel. Sha timer. The rice should definitely be ready, so. Let's turn it off and check it. Mm, smells exactly really good. 19 minutes later. What you want to do, take a fork, a knife, a spoon. I use a chopstick. Put it to the bottom of your rice. If it comes out clean and dry, you know your rice is ready. This rice is ready. You don't want to stir anything around right now. Just let it sit for five minutes before we mix everything in. While the rice is resting, I will show you what to do with the chicken. Remember earlier we put some garlic oil away? What you want to do now, we're going to rub that garlic oil all over the chicken. But before that, you want to make sure that the chicken is dry. This has been sitting in the strainer for about 30 minutes now. What I would recommend is taking a piece of paper towel and patting it dry. Once your chicken feels dry and a little sticky, you want to brush it with that garlic oil that you have. We are going to let this chicken absorb a little of that oil for two to three minutes. And by that time, the rice will be ready, the chicken will be ready, we have our condiments, we can assemble. But before that, I also need to show you how to slice the chicken. Stay tuned. It's been five minutes, our rice 
is definitely ready. What you want to do right now is gently stir it around. As you can see, it's sticky, it's bouncy. How does it smell, Ju? Garlicky. It smells so good. And no? very nice. I love jasmine rice for its flavor. It just smells delicious. So once you've lightly mixed everything together, you're going to cover it. We'll go cut the chicken and we'll be right back. So what you want to do is separate the leg from the breast. As you can see, it comes off pretty easily. And it looks juicy, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. You want to take the wing away. And you want to pull the breast out of here. So now that your chicken breast is ready, I'm going to show you how to slice it. It looks really pretty, actually. Thank you. Take your knife, have a sharp knife, it helps a lot, and delicately slice through your chicken. Take your time to make sure that you move the knife around enough so it actually slices the chicken and doesn't like crush the chicken away. So if you were to rebuild it, this is what it would look like. So now that we have the chicken cut up, I think we should assemble and taste it. Yay. The best part. So now that everything is ready, let me show you how to put it together on a plate. This rice smells so good. You can smell it over here. All right. You want to put a big scoop of rice on your plate. Scoop as much as garlic as you can with it. Looks so pretty as well. It does. I would say one and a half scoop is a good portion. You also want to put a few slices of cucumber. And we are going to put the chicken on. I find that one whole breast is a lot of meat, so I'm going to put like three quarters of it. This looks so good. It looks so much like Singapore, for sure. <laughs> and you want to just put a little sauce between your chicken and your rice. Just a little, just a little, just a little. Just to create that bridge. This looks so good, we should be tasting it together. You want to come over, Ju? I will. Et hey, voilà. voilà! Our chicken <laughs> rice is here. How does it look, Ju? Honestly, it looks so much like the chicken rice we had in Singapore, but honestly, a lot better just presentation-wise. So, so I'm really excited to give it finally a try. So while you tell them a little bit more about the history of the dish, I'm going to have a bite and let you know what it tastes like. Do it. So just so that you know that this, day, this dish actually dates back 2,000 years to the Qin Dynasty because there was actually a dish called Wing Chan Chicken in the southern province of China called Hainan. That's why it's also called Hainanese Chicken Rice. So good to know. How you're nodding? It's so good. It's so good. It's so, it's so fresh. I don't know. It tastes like... Well, it's because it's simple, fresh ingredients, right? It's the sauce too. I'm getting into it, I'm sorry, I'm not it's really... So, well, soy sauce is really heavy, right? But then the rice has such a clean flavor with just the rice and the garlic. And when the chicken has been brined with all the spices yesterday, the sugar, the salt, the ginger, and today we steamed it with the ginger and the green onions. It just all kicks in different layers of flavor, but it just all makes sense, right? And to refresh, why not a slice of mm -hmm. cucumber? Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. So it's really the, the chicken is really soft very smooth i love the skin it's not greasy but yet it's a little bit fatty of course and it gives you that extra kick of flavor um do, through the brining process of mm. course and again i love this garlic rice you think this is regular kind of rice no it get, has so much more flavor to it and together it just works super mm. well and then we have the sauces here on the side, so if you feel for dipping sure. a little bit more, especially the meat maybe, we have uh, some hot sauce, and then of course the um, fermented black, black bean, bean sauce. sauce, so that works super well as well. So if you like this video and you love this recipe, leave us a comment below. 
Don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave your notification bell on at all times so you can get more amazing recipes like this. Just like this one. So thank you so much for watching today. Cheers. And until next time. You don't ever want to tell me what you thinking. One sentence is too much for your tangled mind. Don't know what's worse, the waiting or the frustration. It's hard to care about you.